so as our relationship with technology continues to evolve, so too does it impact on the fashion industry. From AI models to 3D printing, every corner of the fashion world is being shaped by tech. And here to dig into some of these changes is someone who's been reporting on fashion innovation for over a decade. She's the author of Electric Runway. Amanda Costco, welcome to The Social. Thank you. Thanks so, so much for having me. Thank Amanda, you. Amanda, you've been researching the intersection of fashion and technology for many years. And you say that there was a, one particular experience that you had that really signaled this new era that we've entered into. Can you share that? Yeah, absolutely. So I came at fashion technology, which is the intersection of fashion and technology, through wearables and technology on the body. And it was really one instance. In 2014, I interviewed a self-identified cyborg. His name's Neil Harbison. And the reason he's a cyborg is because he has an antenna, osteo integrated, meaning attached to the bone, into his head. And you might be thinking, why the heck would he have that? It's so that he could hear color. So he is an artist, but he was born colorblind with a condition called achromatopsia. And every color gives off a sound frequency, and it allowed him to hear color and perceive the world in a different way. But it was really meeting Neil and hearing his story that made me realize, you know, we're carrying around our technology, we're beginning to wear our technology, and eventually we're going to become our technology like Neil. And so wearable technology is one chapter in the book, and what the book does is it looks at different emerging technologies through the lens of fashion, starting with the smartphone and then going all the way up to our current moment, which is AI, and then what's next, which is biotechnology. Okay, wow. we're going to get to all of that. I don't know if anybody is a child of our era, but has anybody seen the movie Clueless? Oh, yeah. yeah. Obvious. <laughs> Well, if you did, you probably fantasized about that opening closet, scene, right? Yes. When Cher has her closet and then, you know, so um, we're not maybe quite exactly where she was at this stage in the movie uh, yet, but what is it that's exciting you in terms of the next frontier um, that you think is going to change the way we shop and the way we dress? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the cool thing about Cher's closet is that it would have to, for that to work today, it would have to have a knowledge of your wardrobe. It would also need to have a knowledge of style and what's in trend, what's out. And in order for all that data to come together, that's where AI can really shine. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to see a lot in terms of how artificial intelligence is transforming the consumer experience. And really it's spotlighting hyper-personalization, so the ability to make the shopping experience more personal than ever. And we saw this with the new update in Zara's app. I don't know if you've played around with it yet, but you can actually see yourself in the clothes online. So rather than looking at a model and trying to assess whether or not that's gonna fit oh. you. You upload two photos and then you can see yourself. And so it's just- I am doing this on commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. It's just a much more uh, hyper-personal way to shop, so that's where generative AI is taking us. Oh. Wow. I mean, taking it one step further, we've been hearing more about digital and virtual clothing. I remember yes. years ago we talked about this on the show, and it seemed sort of so preposterous, <laughs> but this is literally clothing that doesn't exa actually physically exist. Um, if, uh, and so this might seem like, in a way, a waste of money. So but what, talk about the value of digital fashion. Yeah, so digital fashion really came up alongside the blockchain and NFT movement where we were making a lot of digital assets that didn't exist in physical form, only in digital. And there was this sort of wave of people wanting to buy these collector items. And whether or not they have value today, I mean, that really depends which asset you're looking at. But this really paved the way for augmented reality and these digital digital try-on experiences. And so we've seen a number of companies that are now embedding this into the try-on experience and embedding it into apps and things like that. So we've seen with Instagram, they've rolled out this restyle feature, which is in Instagram stories, you can actually ask restyle to change your outfit entirely. Oh um, my God, that's me. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? Oh my God, Cynthia, watch, they're gonna change your dress. Is this gonna, <gasps> oh wow. So it's funny, we dress a lot for the digital gaze these days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, it's like if you didn't wear the, if you didn't capture a picture of the outfit and put it on Instagram, did it happen? And so this is giving you a way to maybe explore a little bit more with your fashion. Oh my God, Amanda, I am blown away right now. I don't even know what to do. You mentioned this earlier that this is supposed to be kind of giving us a more personalized experience with fashion, something hyper-personalized, mm -hmm. just for me, my taste, my style. 
But on the other hand, you can also see how maybe someone's personal style might completely disappear. Like, so wh what is that intersection between AI and how will that impact like my personal mm -hmm. taste and style or Cynthia's personal taste and style? Yeah, something I talk about in the book is this idea of algorithmic monotony. Yeah. And we've heard of this idea of like Instagram face, like everyone's starting to look the same. And yeah. it, the same thing is happening with our personal style as well. If we're all dressing for the algorithm and the algorithm favors a certain look, then are we all gonna just start wearing the same outfit? Um, and I think that you can say that we're going in that direction, but at the same time, Instagram and social media have opened up our perspectives to so many different styles that are mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. and exposing us to different body types and ways of putting together an outfit. So it's really twofold. I mean, it can go both ways. Yeah. Okay, so automation is also becoming an increasing concern within the fashion industry. What do you see as the most significant impact that automation might have on fashion? Yeah, exactly. So. For me, the story of fashion and technology coming from the West was like wearables and technology and the body and shopping apps. But then I went to Bangladesh and they did not care about wearable technology, what they were concerned about. And when they heard fashion technology, it meant automation. It meant robots taking over people's jobs. And it was a very real threat when you consider that 80% of their GDP comes from textiles and many people um, rely on these jobs for their daily living. And so it really is an example of how fashion technology is different depending on where you go. But um, we're starting to see more automation in the manufacturing experience and it's changing the way our clothes are made for better or for worse. I mean, I get into it in the book, you can see it mm -hmm. both ways, but mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely something very real. Mm -hmm. Okay, something I wanna know if you think it's real anytime soon, people are very familiar now with 3D printers, people are making all kinds of things with them. Do you envision a world where I could, I don't know, I'm like, I'm gonna go to the club tonight and I'm gonna 3D print. A tiny little top. A tiny <laughs> little top and a tiny little little skirt, probably booty shorts, but anyway, <laughs> are, how many, like how close are we to that reality? Well, I mean, technically you could do that today. It's just if you have knowledge over 3D printing and the filaments and everything like that. So there's great examples from Couture of designers using 3D printing like Iris Van Herpen. We had um, mm. Francis Batonti, he did his famous dress for Dita Von Teese yep. that was 3D printed. So uh, there's definitely designers that are experimenting with it. Wow. Uh, but in terms of what people are printing at home, I think it's more like accessories, like maybe a handbag or earrings or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to actually 3D print an entire outfit. There was an artist that did it, Danit Peleg. She was the first designer to 3D print her entire collection at home. But the filaments that come out of a 3D printer are hard, and mm -hmm. so they're not what we're used to when we think of our clothing, which is like soft and has to drape sure. and has to be comfortable. Yeah. Still have a ways to go. We yeah. still have a ways yeah, to yeah. go. Uh, we want to, We have a bit of a, a minute left, but we want to get to this, which is about digital product passports. They are yeah. becoming law in the European Union, and the same will likely happen in Canada. Yeah. So can you break down just quickly what these are and how they might change the shopping game? Yeah, absolutely. So just like the EU is more strict about their food laws and what goes into the food and how, what they disclose about the food, the same thing is starting to happen with textiles. And so it's becoming law that any textile product in the EU has to have a digital product passport, which is either a QR code that lives online, something that you scan, and it basically shows you the ingredients essentially of what's in your outfit, where it came from, how it was made and um, how to properly dispose of it when you're done with it wow. so that we can make sure that we're... Um, we love that. Yeah, contributing to the circular economy. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Listen, this has been a really cool segment, right? Yeah, thank I, you. I, we've learned a lot. Amanda, thank you so, so much for being here. And thank you for writing this book, everybody. It is called Electric Runway. It is available now, so please, what a fascinating read. Thanks so much for Thanks joining for us. Thanks for having Amanda. me. Thank you. Thank you.